just a few minutes and let our viewers find us on live. If you join us, let us know where you're watching from. Oh, some people starting. Hi, Lori. Got South Dakota. Robin in Maryland and Anne. Anne from Washington this, this week. week. <laughs> <laughs> Traveler. <laughs> Laney, Washington. <laughs> Jerry. Why is it good to oh, <laughs> Jerry has a joke for us. That's good. Why is it good to have a Halloween party at a haunted house? No, I'm not sure. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Hi, Tammy. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. We have a special guest with us today. Josh is with us from Data Mars True Test, and he's going to talk about the importance of weighing your livestock. Be sure to get any questions in those comments that you might have for Josh. He's here to answer them. Um, one lucky viewer at the end of our segment is going to win a Patriot Solar Guard 500 Solar Fence Energizer. It's kind of hard to see that with the plastic around it, but an awesome prize. Um, you won't want to miss out on that, so please get your questions in there or just tell us hello and let us know that you're watching with us today. And with that, Josh, we're going to turn it over to you. Hi, my name is Josh Woodesey, and I'm a fourth generation farmer from Canada. Me and my wife and our daughter uh, took over the family farm a couple of years ago, cow calf operation with some breeding stock and some small cash crop. Um, most days it's a joy to work with my three uncles and a family friend. Uh, and we run a variety uh, of farms and we do spring calving at one farm, fall calving at another. And then we uh, run like first and second calvers at one place, the other girls at the other. And then we also do a bull and heifer evaluation test. So my day job is working with Data Mars Livestock, uh, and we manufacture the True Test line, the Patriot Electric Fencing, the Speedrite, as well as the Z Tag and Temple Tag brands, and the NJ Phillips and Simpro syringes. And Data Mars as a whole has decided to bring all these brands together so we can grow together. So the same way as I know me and a lot of other people have started incorporating some smart technology into the home, the idea is we can, as Data Mars, incorporate smart technology and keep the cattle out on the range or sheep or goats or any other livestock. And that's a really nice thing where, where Data Mars is really trying to keep uh, the animals on the range, but also capture all that information and have those products all integrate together. Uh, I know it's never too late to, to learn new things, uh, especially getting married. Uh, my wife reminds me that a lot. Um, and I'm 6'3", so I see the world in a certain way. And I notice my wife, who's 5'3", kind of sees it from a different angle. And now that I have a one-year-old, it's a total another view of how to see the uh, world. But I know a couple of years ago at the one farm, it was late at night, I stopped in coming home. And there was one of those, you know, big, beautiful cows that's a little too fat uh, in January calving. And so I call my wife, say I need some help. And I get into the pen and I hook up some rope, get a pitchfork and I'm pulling and pulling. And my arms are starting to burn and this, this calf is not moving. And I'm pulling and pulling, finally break a pitchfork, grab another pitchfork and I'm pulling and sweat straining. And I'm thinking, okay, there's no way this is going to work. Thankfully, my wife's a vet. 
worst case scenario, we'll have to do a C-section. But she comes along, she tells me to get out of the pen. She grabs some rope, some tackle, hooks up the calf, goes back about 100 feet, hooks it to the wall, tightens up the rope, sits on it, tightens it up, sits on it. Within a couple minutes, she had that big bull calf out. She didn't break a sweat or anything. And I have to keep remembering just because you might be viewing the world differently doesn't mean that you don't have a really good um, uh, way to solve a problem. And that's the one thing that I know as being a fourth generation farmer, sometimes I do things the way my dad did it because the, he did the way his dad did and he did it the way his dad did, but didn't realize um, you can incorporate the new technology when it comes along because it can save you a lot of time and effort. And here we're talking about uh, why weight. I know every time I go to the doctor for a checkup, he always wants my weight. And often I kind of grimace at the scale because he always says the same thing. But that shows why it's important for people to weigh. And when we're in the cattle business or sheep or goats, anytime you're wanting to add that weight on, you also need to be weighing. And when you weigh, it replaces the guesswork. And you're left just with facts and it makes decision easy. Uh, decision making a lot easier because you know what you're dealing with. Especially as soon as you start to weigh those critical decisions on type of feed you're using or health treatments or herd management to see decisions with breeding and other events all start to seem easy because you have those facts to make that happen. Because when you can't, you can't manage something that you can't measure. And I know we're all good at eyeballing our animals, especially my uncles I always think they're better than the scale. Uh, but I'm really glad we have a scale at our operation because it makes uh, those management decisions instead of just emotional, but we can rely on those facts. And those facts really make a difference when we look at the checkbook. So when should you weigh your animals? I think it's very important to weigh at birth. Uh, ideally, you would use a digital scale, but often at my operation, the, the main thing, as soon as that calf's born, we're going to put a management tag in, we're going to needle with A and E, uh, and some selenium. And then if they don't have the four-wheeler with the scale on, they just use a weight tape. Uh, and the trick is with the weight tape, often they were designed in the 50s uh, for those type of animals back then. So it's always good to get a physical weight, even if you have to get a bathroom scale, you and holding the calf, but just make sure that uh, if you're using a weight tape that it's calibrated for the type of livestock you have. Because if I'm using it on say my Simital or someone's using it on a, on a big Charlet or if someone's using it on a low liner, that tape um, is only so good. So it's always good to calibrate it. Uh, I know when we first started, I was using a large fishing scale, uh, which didn't last very long, but it's important to grab those weights. And then uh, after the birth weight, the next weight's really handy as a weaning weight. And the trick is with the weaning weight is you also want to adjust it for, uh, the standard is 205 days of age. So that way when you're comparing animal to animal, uh, you're doing it as if everyone was born the same day and then got that weaning weight the same day. And then as soon as you adjust it for those 205 days, you can easily compare year to year. And then I also like to recommend doing a yearling weight. And then same thing, adjusting that to 365 days. And trying not to do more than say 50 days before or after that window. So that way, when you adjust it, you have a valid number there. The next real important time to grab a weight is when you do treatments. Uh, I might be a little harsh on this being married to a large animal vet, but it's so important some drugs that aren't effective when they're underdosed or overdosed. And that's where if you can get a weight, uh, it makes a world of a difference to properly manage that health of the animal and you're giving them the proper amount. Um, and when you think of a small feed yard, uh, it could easily pay for a shoot system and scale within two years just on the savings of Draxon. Draxin is a great product. It's not cheap, but the problem with Draxin is when you underdose, underdose it, you're ending going to treat them at least two or three times because there's not enough product into their system to make it work. And the same thing when you overdose, you're just tossing that money away. 
So anytime you do treatments, it's ideal if you can grab a weight. The other thing that we do on my farm is uh, when we grab weights, uh, when we put cattle out to pasture or bring them in, we are not actually catching them in the head gate. Uh, so they go into the chute or we also use a platform at another place. So they just step in, we grab a weight, open it up. And the second time the cattle go through there, they know there's no scary needle or, or a head caught and cattle roll through there, no problem. Uh, the other time we grab weights is at 90 days before calling a cow. So we might do some preg checking, see which ones that are open. We grab a weight that day and then we decide, do we ship them tomorrow? Or do we wait 90 days, put on that extra uh, weight, and then will, will we get paid for feeding them the next 90 days? Um, I hear a lot of people who weigh their stalkers as they're loading them onto the truck and then debating uh, the feed yard or the, the uh, stockyard on a shrinkage. And I think at that time, just I wouldn't bother weighing them but what I like to do is weighing them at least 30 days before we send them so that way we know uh, we could put on uh, an extra 100 pounds if we kept them for an extra 30 days or we might ship uh, the ones that are ready today keep another group for another 30 days and then we might have a group that's smaller and then it's a question do we keep them for 60 or do we just let them go and take the hit and that's the nice thing as soon as you have a weight you can actually make a management decision besides, okay, it's a Tuesday, Ed's coming over, we're going to load cattle and we're just going to ship them and then fingers crossed and hope we get paid. Uh, that's where uh, it, it's hard to be a, a farmer when you're just, uh, or a rancher, when you're just praying that it's a good day at the, the sale. So we talked about weighing and the, how to weigh, you can use a weight tape and that works all right for birth weights. Uh, and you can even use a hanging manual scale, which also will work all right for birth weights. Uh, you can use suspension uh, load cells if you're uh, weighing smaller animals or uh, other ruminants. Uh, and the one thing I didn't really think of until I started working with the company is platform scale. And that's where it's a set of load bars and you can put in the chute or behind the chute uh, and then you have your permanent uh, chute setup where you're going to have those load bars bolted to the chute and then bolted to the cement. And then a little bit about true test. So we have uh, MP600 load bars and they're a multi-purpose load bar and they're 600 millimeters long or 23 inches. And they can uh, handle up to 4,400 pounds. And those are ideal where you put that platform on is you can easily weigh that animal. You can put it in the chute, behind the chute, or at one location, we just have a couple gates where we'll gate the animal, run them over the chute, let them go by. The other popular load bar is the MP800, and it's 800 millimeters or 32 inches long, and it can weigh, it can handle 660 pounds. And those are a great option if you're not uh, ready for that permanent chute. And for your permanent chute, what we do is we have an HD5T. So these are heavy duty uh, load bars that can weigh up to five tons or 11,000 pounds and they're 39 inch long. So if you have a big hydraulic chute or even a small chute, they're a great setup if you have a cement pad to bolt them down uh, and bolt them to the chute. The nice thing with uh, the True Test products uh, is that you can mix and match. So basically you can choose any load bar that you need for your setup with any scale head. And the one thing that uh, works really well is we have this new uh, basic uh, scale head, which we call the S3. And you can easily see it in sunlight. It's also water and dust proof, as, as well as it can Bluetooth to your smartphone. So that way, if you want to capture that weight, as well as record management number, or if you had other uh, an app that allowed a Bluetooth signal from a scale, you can uh, import it right there and then. Uh, but it's a great entry level uh, if you don't need your, uh, to store all your records on your scale head. The other scale head we have is called an XR5000. And that's basically a rugged laptop where no problem seeing it in the sunlight, it's water and dust proof, 
but it also gives you some stats right on the screen where you can see average daily gain based on the last time you weighed them. Uh, you can also uh, select drugs and you can put them in there. So it will automatically tell you how many cc's or milliliters that you need to dose the animal, as well as record the withdrawal timeline on that. Uh, with that scale head, you can also sort animals by weight or criteria. So if you wanted to run all your calves through and you already had them listed as male, female, you can set it to indicate uh, to the right for males, to the left for females. Or if you wanted to sort your calves, say under 600, go to the right, uh, 600 to seven, go straight ahead, and 800 and above, go left. And if you don't have an auto sorter, the nice thing is it'll just indicate on the screen which way you want it to go. So if you have someone else helping you, they don't have to remember which way to open up the gates, that'll automatically do it. The other nice thing is you can capture up to 100 customized fields. So as you're doing some preg checking, you can easily capture that weight, record the preg checking or attitude, or if you were um, capturing body score or frame, or even attitude of animals at that time, you can capture that. You can capture up to 100 custom traits. Uh, you can also store up to a million individual records. And the nice thing is you can easily pull, uh, upload and pull down spreadsheet files off the scale head. So if you already have software, uh, it'll easily work with that, as well as it's compatible with Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and USB. So if you finish weighing the cattle, you captured maybe all the preg checking, some other treatments, body condition, you can simply link it to your phone and email that file to wherever it needs to go. Um, and some states are now implementing the RFID buttons. And that's the nice thing is it'll also, you can link it with a Bluetooth reader to capture that RFID number as a unique identifier uh, with that weight. The nice thing with the true test system, it's designed to be totally um, compatible with any software that you currently have or want to have that allows you to import and export uh, data. So if you have all your records, you can easily export it as a spreadsheet, upload into the scale head, add information to that, and I'll then export it. We also have uh, software that's a uh, base that will manage and keep track of all of the weights that you do. Uh, but the nice thing is if you know, there's this perfect software for Texas or perfect software uh, for South, South Dakota. It'll easily allow you to integrate and you don't need to buy a new system. I think the trick is as soon as you get a, a way system that you make use of it. And I find so many times people just buy one nice heavy duty uh, set of load bars and shoot, but maybe only run cattle over it once. And that's where I bring up maybe a platform scale will be would be also an issue or an option because you can put it in the chute or you could put it behind or you can use it for other things. And about two years ago at, at my farm, what we do is we put corn through a hammer mill and we fill up totes. And we take it over to the calf feeder and we we're finding that some weeks that calf feeder would empty within a week and other times it would take almost two weeks to empty. And so the uncles are talking in the shop and they're thinking it's related to weather or they're concerned about coyote or they're thinking maybe it's the moon that's causing the calves to eat way more than others. Uh, and then we, we got the platform scale out and we started to weigh the totes of feet. And we found one uncle would fit, fill the tote up to 1,800 pounds and the other uncle would average 1,200 pounds. So you got a 600 pound swing there. Um, and there's nothing to do with weather, coyotes, moon. Uh, it was just the amount of feed we're actually putting in. But the bag looked full. So that's the trick. As soon as you can start weighing, or as soon as you get a scale system, you can think about weighing the cattle, but you can also weigh, say, totes of feed. Or when you get one bale off the, that first hay field, you can weigh that to see if putting fertilizer in worked, if the bale's heavier or lighter. Um, as well as uh, I even take my scale system down to the local fair because they weigh uh, the large pumpkins. Uh, about a week ago, the, the fair happened. Uh, and you need a really good scale because the largest one that won was over 1,850 pounds. 
uh, heavier than most of my cows, uh, just one pumpkin. Um, but that's the nice thing. As soon as you have a scale system, uh, don't think of it just for that setup, where if you maybe can pay a little more and get a system that you can use all year round, then it makes it much more worthwhile. And I think as soon as you start to get some weight data, then you start to think of what you can do with it. And the same thing is um, we do a little bit of cash cropping here and we just pulled off corn. Uh, automatically halfway through, I can start calculating the number of bushels per acre. Uh, I know how much the land costs. I know how much the seed, the spray, the fertilizer, uh, the equipment maintenance. And those are numbers that my banker wants to review with me, unfortunately, each year. Um, but that's the same thing that you can do with the cattle. Uh, and when you start to treat it as a business and start to know your, your inputs and your outputs, it makes a world of a difference and it takes all that anxiety away when running a small business, even though it might be just a two day business or it might be a, you know, a seven day uh, business, it's still a business uh, if you're putting money into it. So if you start to manage it like a business, uh, it starts to be way more enjoyable. The other thing you can start to do is with uh, managing your cows. So if you don't want to weigh your cows, just think about uh, knowing that as a cow, when she reaches the age of nine, her productivity really starts to decline. But the question is, will she start to decline at nine and slow drop uh, and stay around till 15? Or by the time she's 10, she's, she's not rebreeding. The one thing that we started to capture is capturing the, her progeny's weaning weight. So we know every year what she's produced for us. So if she did slip, say back two months, we know maybe she had twin bull calves and she needs more energy. Um, and that gives us a much better idea of to manage your cow herd. And that's the real trick. Um, if you're buying in replacements or trying to grow your own, uh, knowing what your cattle are, are doing for you. So just by capturing the birth weight, birth date, a weaning weight can tell the difference if you have, say, you know, a $1,500 replacement female or a $4,000 replacement female for how she will gain on your environment. And I'm up by the corn belt, so I'm, I'm looking for a different style of animal on a much smaller range that they have to walk, where other people, you know, uh, have to do a lot of walking where I'm, I'm very fortunate where I can have, you know, a cow per acre, no problem. Uh, where a lot of the people I deal with, they might have need 10 or 20 or even more acres per cow to, uh, to pasture. Um, so as soon as you start thinking of, uh, that you're going to start weighing, then you can start thinking of breeding condition. Right? Are your cows in the right weight? Uh, for first-time breeding, are your cows uh, in the right weight for traditional breeding? Uh, some people may be trying different feeds. And uh, if you notice, maybe there's just that 10% that is lighter than everyone else, as well as they're weaning lighter, that totally red flags you that maybe it's a health issue. Maybe you need to deworm the whole herd. Or maybe those lower producing females, you just need to move on. Uh, one of my favorite cows, um, uh, 94R, was always, you know, black, white face, big barreled, always beautiful in the field. Every time he went out, I swear she came over just so she could get a picture. Uh, but as soon as he started looking at what she weaned, she always weaned the lightest calf. And it's because she made sure to feed herself and the calf was kind of a, a secondary uh, and unfortunately, I had to let her go once I, I kept her till six. But once I kept looking at the numbers going, she's costing me money compared to everyone else. And I was silly enough that I had one of her heifers coming as a replacement. So I just knew I had to let them go because uh, they weren't working for me. They weren't the style of animal that worked at my operation. But that's the trick. As soon as you can start to narrow down on what animals work in your operation, you can really make the difference. So as soon as you start benchmarking um, from at your operation from year to year, 
then you can start benchmarking how you're doing compared to people who are in a similar situation that you are in. And then the real goal is then to start benchmarking to uh, who you feel who's made it as a producer. And that's the, the real exciting part when you have those hard numbers to see, you know, how many live cows or calves per cow, but then actually how much you're, you're weaning, how, how much you're able to gain if you're buying in feed or growing your feed that makes a world of a difference. So as soon as you start thinking about improving your operation, I always think of the first step is to monitor animals performance and being able to grab a weight really helps with that. And then improving your animal health and grabbing a weight helps with accurately treating and then starting to forecast when the optimal time and weight is for sale. And that makes a, a night and day when you're trying to pay bills and uh, hopefully get a vacation in when the COVID's not happening. Uh, if, if you plan it right, you can actually start planning some of more of that family time. And then you start to increase the accuracy of your benchmarking and performance records. And now you can really start having fun because you have all that data uh, as Myself, often I'll get on the four by four with a coffee and go into the middle of the field. And instead of going to a shrink, I just hang out with my cows in the pasture. Uh, that's when you really start to think, okay, I need you know a new baler or X. It makes it all worthwhile because I can pencil it out. So at the end of the day, um, you can't manage what you can't measure. And that's the one thing where it's so important to start grabbing the weights any way you can and not just when you sell them. And if you want more information on uh, the True Test products, you can always go to truetest dash, or sorry, true-test.com for information. Okay. Um, we did have a few questions rolling in here. Fire away. One of them was, uh, how effective are the weight tapes? So I'm going to give you an unhappy answer. It all depends on your breed and when the tape was designed. So the tapes that I have access where I am were designed for Hereford and Angus traditional animal sizes in the 50s. And so I've rewritten them that work for my operation and I have a faster growing black and red scimitols, but that might not work where you are. So that's where it's so important. If you get a weight tape and, and worst case scenario, bathroom scale and grab a couple weights to make sure that weight tape works for you um, or just buy a true test scale and you're, you're good to go. Um, what is the best scale to uh, weigh like goats and sheep on? The smaller animals. So I would go. I would go with depending on your crate, uh, the MP or the multi-purpose low bars. I have one here. Um, so to work on uneven surfaces, and you put the chute right on top, and then that way you can easily weigh up to forty-four hundred pounds. So if that's you, the shoot and the animal, and while the shoot and you are on it, you can zero it out to capture that weight. But the nice thing is you can use that same thing on any size of platform if you need to weigh hay or feed, or even put it into a shoot for um, larger animals like cattle. Okay. Uh, can a true test scale head work with my existing load bars? So day one, uh, True Test is designed to be compatible with uh, Digistar and Gallagher, but you can also uh, take your existing load bars and get a different end put on it. So True Test uses a standard marine connector to make sure that it's waterproof. So that way, um, a lot of our scale heads, you know, will be in an unclean environment. So that's why they're designed to be dropped, thrown. Uh, pressure wash wiped off with uh, Vercon or Lysol uh, and still keep going. So that's the one thing you just need to trade forward to do that.
Um, Cheyenne had asked if those would also work um, good for show hogs. Excellent, because you can, um, we make platforms that are two feet wide by four feet, uh, but if you're needing a, a different setup, uh, you can easily make a different platform. So at the one farm, I made a 12 foot long. Platforms I have 16 of cord, so you can have uh, quite a bit of space and you just put one load bar at one end, one load bar at the other, and then the scale head in the middle or wherever you need it. But uh, in, for pigs, a lot of people will use it for a crate as well as say a feed cart. So that way they're using it daily. And then it seems dirt cheap when you're, you're using the product all the time. What are the key benefits of your different indicators? I, I kind of talk about where the brains are at. So when you have a simple S3 scale head like this, um, it's just showing the data and then it can Bluetooth it out somewhere else. And so if you're using a pen and paper, this is a perfect one. Or if you're using a smartphone, then this becomes a smart scale head with your smartphone. Then once you go to the more advanced scale head, which is a kind of a brick like this, show it in the camera the right way. Um, this is all your drug and the dosage per weight and I'll automatically calculate it. You can also on the screen see you're running total of the total weight that you weighed that day. So maybe you're loading a truck and you want to know how many animals are getting on. It'll automatically give you average daily gain and it allows you to totally customize it. So if you have all your breeding records and you upload it and when you're preg checking you can automatically see maybe you AI'd a cow twice and the bull was in. Uh, you can capture that all there uh, on that bigger scale head. So we kind of try to have uh, load bars for all different environments and then scale heads from the intro to the very advanced. When you start using these, do you have to like zero them out some way or are they just ready to go? So out of the box, they're set to auto zero. So whatever you put on, uh, it'll auto zero. But there's also on all the scale heads, you'll see a big zero button. So that way uh, you can zero it at any time. Okay. Um, Adam had asked, um, the, do the programs with the scales cost extra or does it come with the scale purchase? So we have base software that's free that easily pulls the files on and off uh, your computer as well as free cloud software where you can manage the base records. And that's the nice thing is day one, you might be only capturing date, weight, and maybe dam. And then day two, you can keep expanding to as much data as you want. And then say year five, when you want more advanced software to calculate maybe um, genomics or uh, you're working with the purebred association, uh, you can easily export from say the American Simtel Association or Cattle Max. Uh, upload the data, capture it, the weight, maybe a treatment, and then upload it uh, seamlessly. So that way uh, you're never locked into one system and you have the base software free day one. Does it let you print out the weights? I would assume like all the data will let you print it out? Yeah, so you can Bluetooth it uh, to uh, a little printer, a Bluetooth printer if you want. Uh, most people will just Bluetooth uh, the file to their phone and then that way they can edit it. So it's uh, a spreadsheet file and it's called a CSV. And so that's a basically a base uh, Excel file without the ability to have color columns. Uh, so you can really modify your data. And then when you upload it, you can upload it straight from Excel or, or Google uh, Numbers or Lotus123 if that's still around. Um, so it gives you that full flexibility. The other really cool thing um, one of the reasons why my operation ended up buying a true test scale, um, even before I started working with the company is we are weighing a uh, wean calves and, uh, one heifer came on, she was weighing 600 pounds and it, 
you know, we calculated average daily gain was underneath the three pounds. So she wasn't going into the breeding stock because uh, we want a min minimum of three pounds per day uh, for replacement females. And then working with family members, you know, one or two animals got through the head shoot. And there's a lot of um, verbal communication with each other uh, on how to not do that again. So we ended up running a bunch back through the shoot. And that heifer that I like the look of, but weighed light, now weighed 650 pounds. So now she was in the keep column. And then I look at our scale system with that 50 pound swing on a weaned animal, realizing I saved money buying a value scale system, but I don't have the accuracy. So then I was on the search for the most accurate and fast scale. And that's where I came across the true test because they uh, offer a plus or minus 1% of that weight. So basically 99% accuracy uh, within two seconds of that, that animal being on the shoot. And that makes a world of difference. And that's why so many buffalo producers who are selling live weight as the animals are going onto the truck end up with the true test system because it's fast and accurate. And that makes a huge difference, the accuracy. Uh, and that's where I like the weight tape if there's nothing else around. But if it's not really that accurate, you can be off a couple pounds at uh, birth weight, but when you're off 50 pounds at weaning, it really starts to question if we're going to spend the time doing it, let's get the right tools to make it uh, work out. And the speed, that makes a huge difference, especially if you're working with family. If you can easily run an animal for every two minutes through, uh, it makes everyone happier, uh, at my household anyways. <laughs> um, we had had somebody ask uh, the best system for horses, for weighing horses. So I go back to that multi-purpose bar, but instead of the 600 or the 623, uh, I would go to the 800 millimeter wide or 32 inch, and that gives you a wider base. So you're able to walk that horse on. Uh, and we also have an aluminum platform with a rubber coating that we sell for that. Uh, but some um, locations that I deal with at events and stuff, uh, they will uh, use that platform and cover it up with sand and then zero it out and easily walk the horse on and the horse doesn't realize that they're on a different surface and easily able to grab that weight. And then you can use the scale head. Uh, so in Canada, we started microchipping our horses and started to implement in 2020 and it's going into the nose. And so we use um, our true test stick reader uh, that originally is designed for the cattle RFID reader, uh, the Z-Tag, um, uh, but we use the cattle version because it has a much bigger radius. So when you deal with RFID tags um, in here, there's a, a Little here will send uh, magnetic energy out uh, to power up that tag and then pull back that chip. And then as soon as you have a small chip, like we use in cats or dogs or horses, that's where you need a device that's very powerful to be able to charge up that chip and pull back that number. Where um, we sell more affordable RFID readers uh, underneath our pet link side because we're underneath the understanding you're in a vet clinic, you don't have to worry about humidity or loud noise or temperature, and you can afford to rub that puppy dog or cat with that RFID reader to charge up that chip. Where this unit is designed, it's kind of shaped like a stick because we know you might use it a little bit like a stick, uh, but it's designed for that severe temp temperature with your Uncle Rich, if you have one. Um, but it's it's really designed as a workhorse and then the nice thing is it'll charge up that chip and automatically send it to the scale head so then you can start to use it as a unique identifier versus having to type in a management number very good all right well i don't think we have any more questions um we've had a lot of good ones come through today um josh did you have anything else to add before we wrap up i would just say uh, before you make any purchases, feel free to reach out with uh, a rep or there's lots of people who've uh, designed for uh, that environment of drop, throw, and wet 
uh, that happens shoot side. And that's where a lot of people will maybe save a little money. Having to replace it because the other ones are worn out. And the true test is designed uh, and they're sold all over the world purely for the fact of the durability and the accuracy. And I was silly enough, I bought one before I started working with the company. So I missed it on the deal. But uh, as a producer, I we're actually up to three systems now at the different farms. So, All right, very good. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. All right, we are going to pick a winner for the winner. This thing is very heavy, but I'm going to hold it up <laughs> so you all can see it. Uh, the Solar Guard 500 Energizer. A very nice prize. And who is our lucky all winner right. today? The winner is Adam Long Longing. Longing. Woo! Good job, Adam. Congratulations. <laughs> all right, we have a couple of announcements oh. first before we hop off of here. Um, join us live next Tuesday. We will be back again going over some more gift ideas with you. Yes. <laughs> you look very fast. And, I know. <laughs> and don't forget to sign up for our Harvest Happening Sweepstakes. You need to be signed up by November 26th. Uh, there's 11 winners this time. So get entered in that. Thank you all for joining us today. And Josh, thank you once again. We really appreciate you being on with us. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you.